It was a practical, tactical rifle competition, precision rifle competition. Uh, shooters had the opportunity in, to engage targets from basically 10 yards to 1,450 yards. One instance, they got to shoot 1,740 yards. It was all reactive steel targets. Uh, the 2014 heat stroke was held in uh, Camargo, Oklahoma, which was on Matt Clem's family's land. Um, it's got a great place to shoot out there. Uh, as far as the sponsors, obviously third generation shooting supply. Uh, we stepped up to be the uh, title sponsor. The title sponsor. There you go for the match. We're the title sponsor for the match. Um, help do all of the prizes. Contact all the vendors. Get the stuff together. Um, the support we got was great. Uh, we had over 80 sign up. I think we had 72 or 74 at the match. Uh, you know, we had some late dropouts, and then one guy quit during the match. Got too hot. So, I mean, by the time it was all said and done, I think we had about 72, so. Setting up the course, it, it uh, stretched out, it probably, time span was three months. Yeah, probably so. Uh, course of fire was, we tried to give them a wide variety, everything from the typical prone to a lot of positional stuff, some hurry up stuff, uh, just tried to make it real diversified. I think there's uh, over a hundred targets hung. The match itself, I was hoping for a higher percent of hits on targets. It's very challenging. Challenging beyond anything that I can ex verbalize and explain. Man, I tell you what, it's been challenging. <laughs> it's been a challenging competition. It's been great, really challenging stages. I mean, I still believe it was a good match, but, but it was probably tougher than we really planned it to be, I guess is how you would yeah, think. I think we figured up you know, real world points because some of those stages are worth a lot of points, but the time was so Impossible. short that there's no way you can get it. As the helicopter goes, uh, everybody's amped up. It, it's a fun deal, and it, it's just something most guys don't ever have opportunity to do. You know, one of the highlights of, for me uh, in this match was uh, to come down and shoot out of a helicopter. That was the absolute rush. The helicopter was really neat. Uh, it's not often you get to fly out of a helicopter. It's rare that you get to fly out of a helicopter and shoot a rifle. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. That was really loud. So.
of the neat things about that place is you've got such a variety of angles to shoot at. I mean, you start off down there shooting back kind of to the uh, you get to be the north northwest. And then you can come basically all the way around and finish up shooting southeast almost. You know, I mean, it's uh, it gives you a wide array of, of wind angles there, and that makes it tougher too. This year, it's a phenomenal location. Uh, you're shooting almost 360 degrees as far as uh, field of fire, so it's. It's really awesome terrain and a, a beautiful ranch for having a match. This is a beautiful place to shoot. Nothing better than a big chunk of farmland and the rolling hills. You know, you drive down the road quite often and you look and say, oh man, that, that'd be a good place for range. This is one of those places. Courses of fire are good. Uh, some long range, some short range, good target sizes. Uh, Man, sure had a good time. A lot of good shooters, a lot of competition, a lot of fun. Man, it was a lot of shooting. That's what's been nice about this match. You get a lot of rounds down. A couple of new ones for me. I'd never shot a reference target. You can see this target. You can't see this one. You reference this one off this one. Um, didn't do so good at it. It was the first time I'd ever done it. Takes a bit of thinking, figuring out. Uh, a lot of the stages we've been shooting have been uh, troop stages, and basically what it is, it's between five and ten targets, and you'll engage every target twice, and uh, targets will get gradually bigger as you go out. We have had a lot of long shots, which is uh, what the sport is sort of based around. Uh, shooting long distances under time stressors, under uh, movement. The one mile stage, the, the Desert Tech one mile stage. Desert Tech sent us some uh, conversion kits for our rifles to use on that stage and, and, and also the ammo. And not everybody gets a chance to shoot, which turned out to be 1,740 yards instead of 1,760. Still, not everybody gets to shoot that far. You know, I had multiple guys even on that one stage with a, that long troop string, I believe, had a 1,328 yard target. Is that right? The guys would run out of time and they'd be on their bolt and they'd say, Time! And they'd say, Man, can I go ahead and send it? It was you know? actually. I was like, yeah, go ahead. Was it was so, Yeah, it was over 14. Yeah. Or right at 14. And so, you know, I'd let them go ahead and shoot just because they don't get a chance to shoot that far. They want to see if they can hit it, you know. So. Um, the loophole shot I just shot, I'd never shot that before. I did actually do quite well on that one. That was another new stage I hadn't shot. So you're always seeing evolution of new types of stages and new ideas. And We had a loophole stage where we, uh, Shot through a sliver that was about a half inch. We shot some real, real interesting stages in the morning. Uh, we started out with the cold bore shot, which is uh, you don't get to do anything except lay down and shoot one shot at a target, and it's a hit or miss kind of thing. You have a, a, a really good mix of, of short range, medium range, and then uh, ultra long range for, for, for the caliber of rifles that we shoot, really ultra long range targets. Uh, we've shot targets out past 1,300 yards. A lot of times you don't engage targets at, at a tactical match uh, much past 1,000. But uh, it's been a good mix of, of all the ranges, good mix of target sizes. Pace of the match has gone really well. And then uh, we've shot quite a few barricade stages where you're uh, really careful of where you're pointing your muzzle, transitioning, um, building positions with your body, and um, trying to hit a small target and heavy wind, and very challenging. So. We shot a, uh, a lot of barricade work and uh, platform troops, uh, known distance lines. Some stage guns, too, some prop guns. We shot pretty much to a mile with a 338. Um, hadn't done that before. I've uh, been shooting since I was 12 years old, and uh, I don't think had one hit at nearly a mile. That's the first time I've shot that far, so it's pretty good. We shot a number of different courses of fire in the morning. Some of them were fast, some of them were long range. Um, it, it, it all were challenging. Come up with a variety of stages, which is what I really like. Um, you're not shooting in the same position. You're shooting off of platforms. You're shooting out of the back of a truck. You're shooting. Uh, he's got this one barricade thing where there's like 17 different shooting areas, and you have to shoot one shot from each of them. It's he's done a really good job of making a real diversified match. I tell you what, every time you come out here, you, there's a lot of good shooters. I mean, there are shooters from all over the United States. 
we got a lot of good shooters here locally, and uh, we got a lot of up and coming good shooters that are uh, going to do a lot for this sport. Almost all of the members in the match are PRS members. Uh, I don't think there, there were some new, some new members. Uh, some of the best shooters in the country are here. It, this, I keep coming back because of the incredible quality of the shooters that are here and the enormously friendly, helpful, good people in Oklahoma. I enjoy being in Oklahoma and shooting the matches. It's, it's an ch extremely challenging match. It's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of the people that why I keep coming back. This is tough. This is probably, we've got the best in the industry here right now. These guys are very tough to beat. You know, if you, if you can finish in the top half here, you've done well. It's been, a, it's been an excellent match. Yeah, Matt, Matt Clem's done, and BJ Bailey done an excellent job. The match, uh, BJ and his staff have done a great job with this match. I'd recommend it to anybody wanting to shoot a PRS match, or just a sniper match in general. It's, it's a very good match, and a great bunch of guys. BJ and Matt Clem, solid as they come. Really thought this match out, it's extremely challenging because the target sizes are pretty small, and they knew that the wind was going to be blowing. But um, third gen has always stepped up, sponsoring matches. They always have something on the prize table, and uh, they they help the shooting community probably more than any other, as far as I know, any other uh, distributor out there. I mean, they really help PRS shooters. You know, they make sure they get their powder and bullets and uh, make sure we're able to shoot these competitions probably better than anyone else out there. That's one of the things about the PRS, I think, is the camaraderie and the friendships that we form. Everybody will help everybody for the most part. I mean, uh, new guys come in, I mean, seasoned veterans will be out there helping them, trying to teach them what to do to, to get better, you know. It's not like a game where you're, you know, trying to keep the little man down. You know, everybody's trying to help everybody. What's really neat about it is there's you're battling each other and you absolutely want to just beat them to death, but you turn right around and give them all you can, you know, all the help you can as far as you know, try this position or or uh, I think the wind's doing this or whatnot. I mean, it's really a neat uh, camaraderie. I mean, a lot of times if you're if you're battling with somebody that hard, they're not really your buddy, but out here it is. We're all friends trying to help each other and beat the heck out of each other all in the same breath, so. And that's the thing is, as soon as someone's on the line, it actually, it's pretty serious with us. You know, we're here to get better and promote the sport. That's what it boils down to, is getting our sport promoted. And I've helped several guys. I had shook their hand for the first time, and then I was giving them wind calls. And again, I've had trouble with my equipment, and my teammates were right there. The camaraderie amongst all these shooters is really awesome. I shoot in a couple of different sports, and this is one of my favorites because of the type of people. And, and there was several remarks made throughout the match that they'd seen some of the best sportsmanship of any of And, you know, we kind of covered that Friday night in the safety brief. I mean.
But we had a tie for first place, uh, Justin Vineyard and Tate Streeter. Uh, we had a predetermined tiebreaker stage of the uh, the Nightfire event, which was on Friday night, of, uh, which was sponsored by EOTech or L3 Communications. We had some thermal uh, imaging units on some rifles. Uh, had uh, Smith and Bender scopes on there. Those, and uh, then we also had uh, a couple AI rifles, Accuracy International, and. Uh, it wasn't a requirement, it wasn't uh, scored for the match, but it was going to be the tiebreaker stage. And Tate came out and shot that, so Tate ended up uh, with, the, with the first place trophy. Uh, both of those guys took home great prizes, though. Tate ended up with the Surgeon Rifle and uh, Vineyard with the, uh, the Beanland Custom Rifle with the J. Allen stock, which he was shooting, so now he's got a backup rig, just like the one he's shooting, basically. And if I recall, Jordy, Richardson was third, mm -hmm. which he'd come up out of Texas. Uh, yeah, he, uh, Jordy picked up the, uh, Studeville. The Studeville, yeah, that's right, that's right. We, uh, decided to feed everybody Friday night. We knew we was going to do the night fire event, uh, and it really turned out pretty well, uh, because we had to get everybody through the safety brief on the helicopter, and, uh, so we catered food Friday night, let them come in, register, sign, get all their paperwork, and uh, so we went through the helicopter brief. Some of them left and some stayed and shot the night fire. Uh, Saturday, you know, you, when it's hot and you're on your feet all day, it's enough to pack your gear, let alone your food. And uh, so we decided we'd done hamburgers on Saturday. Yep. Uh, I haven't had a complaint about any of the food. Uh, and Sunday we ended up having a rib crib come in. The timing was great. Uh, it really turned out well. Uh, I, and like I said, I think all the feedback on the food was great because it, it's not like, I mean, them guys stayed in Elk City, some stayed in Woodward, but you know, they're leaving around four in the morning and uh, just to get there. and. Uh, in that part of the world, there's not exactly a lot of places to stop at four in the morning. Our uh, rifles we had on the prize table, we're fortunate enough in Oklahoma, I mean, there's some tremendous gunsmiths and we had some of the best that there is on the prize table. Uh, John Beanland, Beanland Custom Rifles. Matt Perry, Perry Custom Gun. Mike Luckett, Coyote Precision. Uh, and then Wade Studeville of Studeville Precision. All these guys built rifles for the prize table and donated the labor. Yeah. Uh, Depi Defiance provided the actions. Yeah. And Bighorn as well. Yes. Yeah, three Defiance and one Bighorn. Uh, XLR provided chassis. Jay Allen yeah. provided chassis. chassis. And mm -hmm. McMillan provided yeah. the stock. Timney triggers in all of them. Uh, benchmark barrels. Uh, Jim blast C with tamer. the blast hammer brakes, yeah. I mean, these were full blown custom, just like everybody's running out there. And yeah, it, I mean, minimum thirty five hundred dollars to build one, probably closer to four thousand minimum. Yep. You know. One thing we wanted to do was give the ROs some incentive as well, you know, and, and reward them because those guys work their butts off, you know. Um, so what we decided to do was since we had, we ended up with uh, five custom rifles, counting the surgeon. But since we had five custom rifles, we wanted to uh, to do something for the ROs, and so we decided to have a drawing. We also had two pair of Swarovski SLC binoculars. Uh, we put one pair of those and then that rifle in and uh, let them choose. Let them choose. Drew the RO's names and then uh, uh, Chase Jamaric, who's a 19-year-old kid, worked his tail off. I mean, uh, he and his dad were out there helping us paint targets in the dark on Saturday night. I couldn't have done that any better. And then Brian Smith, 
We drove all the way up from Texas to help do this one, the Swarovski. So I mean, that just worked perfect, I thought. And, We're uh, part of a, a local club here, I say local, it's a statewide called Oklahoma Practical Precision Shooters and fortunate enough to have about 125 members, all really good guys. Um, they really stepped up to help us with the ROs. Um, most of the guys I would say, no, you think we're OPPS members? Yeah. Uh, most of the guys are um, and a lot of those guys give up their time to RO matches all the time. Uh, can't say enough about them. They just did whatever was asked of them. Uh, I believe the match director and the ROs, the range officers, have done an awesome job at the heat stroke. And these uh, these large matches at this scale don't go on without all the guys that are in the back, like in the behind the scenes. A couple of the range officers actually came from Texas with their guys, and uh, it, it's a huge help. It's a it's a just a, an enormous benefit to have good range officers. That way you don't have one guy having to spot targets, write down scores, uh, give stage briefs. It, it really makes it run a lot smoother when you have, when you have several range officers at a, at a stage. We also yeah. had some guys travel mm -hmm. from uh, South Texas and uh, New Mexico. New Mexico, that's right. Yep. to come in just to help and I mean honestly the match wouldn't have wouldn't have happened without no. them there's no way you can't have a match like that without good ROs and I mean uh, some of the emails we've gotten back on our feedback that's probably the best group of ROs that any yep. one match has had and I mean that's all the way from the less experienced guys hauling water uh, and ice to the you know the seasoned vets that's been doing mm -hmm. it forever i mean we was very fortunate uh the flow of the match keeps everything going uh, we had i think it was 35 to 40 ro's volunteer and give up their weekend pretty much to uh to make this happen so i'm just fortunate to be here john woodworth was john woodworth instrumental and, uh, in that yeah he was ross, very reeves. ross reeves and uh john snyder's son what was his first name I can't remember and uh, Jordy's boy Chase Chase yep those guys uh, stepped up they huge. stepped up big time so these guys that are behind the scenes they, 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 they really keep everything lubed and going I mean we have guys running water out here that's one of the big things whenever it's so hot out here we have guys that are doing a good job keeping us hydrated we went through uh, a pallet and a half of water didn't we? pallet yeah about a pallet and a quart no a full pallet of water and uh, about 200 bags of ice. Hope to add to it for next year and make it better yet. You know, it's a Definitely. work in progress and uh, we're satisfied, I think, <clears throat> with the way it went this year, but not pleased, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. We want to turn it into one of the premier matches in the, in the, in the series. Uh, that's our goal.